Hey there, and welcome to Becoming a Bowhunter. I'm your host, Matty, and join me and our guests as we take the quality of meat back into our own hands. Searching the wild for free-ranged animals to harvest as ethically as we can. I interview a variety of specialists from the bow hunting community to help fast track your journey as a bow hunter. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this chinwag on one of your favorite topics in the world, bow hunting. Okay. Guys, welcome back to Becoming a Bow Hunter. I'm super pumped about this one. I've got PJ Riley on the line from Lancaster Archery. PJ, welcome, mate. Maddie, thanks for having me. Good to talk to somebody on the other side of the world. Yeah, we're just kind of comparing um, hunting, I guess, uh, hunting rules, really. The differences between Australia <laughs> and America, and there's, there's definitely a, a lot of difference. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and which is funny, too, because it sounds like you have a lot more species as you know than we do. I mean, you were talking about all the deer you have. We have deer. one, whitetail. That's yeah. it. Yeah, so, I mean, depending on where you are, right? Because you've got muleys as well, don't you? Oh, yeah, in other parts of the country, mule deer, uh, you know, elk, of course, yeah. black tail deer, Colombian, some couple different species, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely, where I am, it's white tail. That's it. Yeah, okay. Well, it is very, definitely very similar. I think you'll kind of find two deer in a location, but uh, aside from that, it's, it is pretty widespread as to where you have to travel to get the deer. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, we, we've got an abundance of um, both animals and, and hunting opportunities. It's just actually finding the access is the hard thing for us. Right. So, PJ, I'd love to hear a little bit more about you, mate. Like, how did you get into, firstly, archery and hunting, and then how did you get into Lancaster archery? Sure. So, I've probably been bow hunting, I think, I think uh, 2020 will be my 30th year. Yeah, cool. Um, of bow hunting. And uh, I got into it just uh, the... The state where I live, Pennsylvania, has a long tradition of hunting. So everybody around me hunted, so I got into it. And kind of at the same time that I got into bow hunting, I got into target archery. Um, just, I liked shooting my bow. Yeah. So, you know, bow hunting, I might shoot it one time a year, and that wasn't enough. So I started doing target archery, and lo and behold, the local shop down the street is Lancaster Archery Supply. <laughs> so I, I've known Rob, uh, the owner of Lancaster Archery for about 30 years. I've been shooting um, in his tournaments and things all that time. And then uh, I, you know, I was a, I, I'm still a writer. I write for a bunch of uh, the hunting magazines here. I've been doing that for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I was a, I was writing for the local newspaper in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and uh, never forget. Maybe about ten years ago, Rob Caulfield, he's the owner of Lancaster Archery, he came to me and he said, ah, "One day, I, I got, I'm getting my website set up." He said, "One day, you're going to come work for me," <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, "Yeah, okay, whatever." And then I guess it was maybe five or six years ago. Now he, I saw him and he said, "Hey, a website set." come on over. So I did. And so he hired me as the, I started out, my, my job title actually still is technical writer for Lancaster Archery. And then it just blew up into this monster that, <laughs> where I do videos and, you know, we broadcast archery tournaments. And it's just a multi-headed monster. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely but, you know, unreal. it's all great. I mean, every day I get to get up and and play with bows and arrows or talk about bows and arrows. So yeah, it's, it's just a great thing. Yeah. I'd definitely uh, like to um, send the listeners across to your YouTube channel. The Lancaster archery supply is the, is what you search up on YouTube and you'll find it. And I mean, it's really insightful. You guys have so much content in regards to product reviews, um, bows, like the new bows that are coming out plus previous years of bows that have come out, like all of the facts, it's just straight to it. And you guys are showing the, the product in use. And I, I really like that. I think it's great. Yeah, and that was kind of uh, an experiment. Mm. Um, uh, Silas Cruz uh, was our video producer at the time. He still works with us, but on a contract basis. But um, he and I got hired about the same time. 
And one year, uh, it was our first year of bow launches, just all these bows started coming out. And we were like, hey, we should do a video on these on these things. I think a Hoyt was the first one we did. And people started watching them. We're mm. like, hey, this is kind of cool. So we just started doing more and more. And then the next year, you know, the manufacturers came to us, hey, we want you to make sure you do this video. And, yeah. Uh, so just, I'm going to say for about the last five years, it's kind of been a staple that, hey, new bow season, we're making videos about new boats. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. And it's cool that it's coming out. Like they're, they're doing so much every single year. It's crazy to see how much they're, they're kind of improving from year to year. Yeah, they really are. And, uh, you know, people always say, ah, oh, you know, which one's the best ones? Mm-hmm. And honestly, when you, the, the top end bows, I don't care which company you pick, they yeah. are awesome bows. These are incredible pieces of engineering and there, there are no bad ones. Mm. I mean, that's, that's truly the case, I believe. Yeah, I think it's um, it, like I've just watched over all the videos again just recently just to make sure I've got some notes down for the, the podcast today. And it's just absolutely insane to see the difference between all of them. And before we do dive down that route, because I do re- definitely want to talk about all the different bows, I would love to ask a little sure. bit more about the Lancaster Archery. Just um, you guys have oh, your yeah. tournament coming up, you were saying. What, what is that and how long yes. have you been running for and what's it involve? Okay, this is, I want to say this is our 16th. Somewhere around 16th, Lancaster Archery Classic. Um, it is the largest indoor archery tournament east of Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Vegas, of course, is the big one. Um, but we are the largest one east of Vegas. We're expecting uh, anywhere from probably two to 3,000 archers to show up. Wow. They, they will come from all over the world. There are several who come from Australia. Uh, ben Doyle's there every year. Uh, our winner last year of our bear boat class was a Michael Fisher. He's from Australia. Okay. Um, so they come from all over the world. We shoot um, compound. We shoot bow hunter division. We shoot open division, bear bow, recurve, Olympic recurve. Uh, just a great time. It's a three-day tournament, and we broadcast the whole thing live. Uh, so a lot of money on the line. Uh, pros there. The top pro can win with contingencies and everything in the neighborhood of $50,000. Wow. Um, So, and this year, actually, we upped to try and entice some more recurve archers. Mm -hmm. We really boosted our payouts for recurve. So, Barebow and Olympic recurve, we believe that this year we'll have the highest payout for an indoor recurve archery tournament in the world. Wow. That's impressive. Uh, So, yeah, we really want to get some some recurve archers out there. That's really cool. And so where can people watch along if they wanted to see that one? Yeah. So it's going to be, uh, boy, I should have the dates, uh, <laughs> memorized. Um, but we broadcast it. You can go to our website, lancasterarchery.com and, um, it will have, you know, we'll have a link to it on our page, mm-hmm. our, our app, you know, our website. You can also just go straight to our YouTube channel, yeah, which is just Lancaster there. Archery Supply. Um, and it's January 23rd through the 26th. Um, our tournament is unique in that, in, in the finals format we have. So 20, the 25th and 26th are going to be the big days to watch. Yeah. Because okay. we whittled all the divisions down to a few archers in each division, and then we shoot head to head, one on one matches, and those are always exciting. Yeah, you know, the be. cameras, the spotlight. I mean, if you, I can't even imagine how an archer keeps it together. That's up what I was there. about to say. The pressure of that just sounds incredible. <laughs> oh, the pressure, I, I can't even imagine. I sweat just watching them. I'm not shooting. So. Oh, that's great. That sounds awesome. So that's awesome. That's a, that's a week after this one will launch, which is really cool. So, um, yeah, oh, listeners, if, you, if you're in on it, it'd be next weekend, essentially, that we can be watching and it will go right through. So realistically, you can be watching on Monday still because of the um, yes. time difference. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, PJ, what I'd love to do is actually just do a little bit of a, a review on on the different bows. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen in different movies where they show the ending first in the movie and then they build the whole story around yes. it. So what I'd yes. love to do, I'm going to introduce all the different bows. And I just want you to say which your favorite bow is. And this is obviously very subjective to just you, but I'd love you to right. say which bow you enjoyed the most. So we've got the Elite Cure. The Bowtech um, Revolt series. So you've got your Revolt yeah. X and your, um, you, you, sorry, you've got your Revolt 30 and your Revolt, I've got it there somewhere, 33. And then you've got your Hoyt Alpha series. There's the RX4, your Carbon RX4. And then you've got your Aluminium uh, Ax- Axius. Um, yes, Axius. Axius, yep. The Matthew yep. VXR, and it comes in different brace yes. heights as well. Of, oh, sorry, different um, axle to axle heights. You've got your PSO yep. Evo and XT, the Prime Black Series, and both of those do have three bows as well. Uh, yep. And that's all of our bows. So, of, yes. of the different bows, which was your favorite? So... Without going too in detail, we'll we'll break them all down. Just gotcha. just say why, or just say which your favorite was, and then we can build <laughs> them down from there. So, my favorite one to shoot had to be the Matthews VXR thirty one and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to prefer Matthews bows anyway. You've so already got something a about the. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, the, I shoot the Matthews Traverse this year. Um, so this one was very similar. So I think that's why I like it. But as, as you're saying, we'll get into some of the other, but there were some incredible developments this year. Oh, yeah. And yeah. there's, there's some things about each of the bows that I really, really like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you were saying, if you were putting them out there, which one do you got to pick up? I'm picking up the VXR 31 and a half. Okay, I love that. That's good. So, I mean, like it just seems like they're way more adjustable than what they ever have been before and so much more yes. accessibility without a bow press now. Right. Um, is That's that across that- all of them or just the few that have changed things? Like is Prime, the Prime, I wasn't sure if you could do without with the bow press or not. So the, what the Prime has done is, so they're moving that way. So there was a time when if you wanted to change draw length on a prime you had to get a different cam Mm -hmm. that was the only way to change it yeah so now this year they added a rotating mod so that's their advancement yeah which i mean you you don't need a bow press to change your mod but you don't have changing cams was a pain yes so they've moved up in adding the rotating mod which that's an incredible development Mm -hmm. hey that's awesome you can fit anybody you know even for the bow shop I don't need to have 10 different bows to get an archer into it. I can have a couple and now I can just change the mod or, uh, you know, move the mod to, so that different draw lengths I can accommodate. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, you know, then you get into like the elite cure, uh, with their new system this year with the pivoting pocket. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. And, And I sat there with the guys uh, Nathan Brooks, um, he helped design it and we took, we stood there on the line and, you know, took the paper tune from way left tear all the way to way right tear to mm-hmm. back in the middle, just with Allen wrenches. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. insane. Right. Didn't so need a press. That's coming from the limbs now instead of the, the cam system as such, or instead of the, the yoke. It, yeah. The, the pocket actually pivots. So yeah, it does the same thing. You're, you're adjusting the limb position, which would be like yoke tuning. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then, of course, um, you have the uh, Bowtech um, with their, um, what's the name? The, the, the deadlock the dead cam s- system. Yeah. Deadlock. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we saw that introduced at Vegas last year in their target series, but now they brought it to hunting. Mm. I mean, that's as simple as it gets. You just move that cam. Yeah. Left and left right. right. It's a piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Matthews um, isn't quite like that. They have the top hat system. So you are taking the cam off and you're actually changing the spacers, Mm -hmm. but, but it's a, it's a kit they have. It's, it's a real simple change to to make those moves. Um, And I mean, it's just, 
it's just awesome that you're able to, to make these changes. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, you still have some bows that are using yolks, which mm-hmm. is, that's easy piece of cake too. Um, so, but seeing some of these things like that elite came out with and like Bowtech came out with, I mean, that's just complete game changer. Super. Right? I, yeah. Because one thing we're seeing mm-hmm. is we are seeing archers being more interested mm-hmm in tuning mm. and in tuning themselves. Yeah. Um, so if they, if you can make it easier for them to do it themselves, Hey, you know, now I don't have to spend $300 on bow press. Mm. I can do, there's still some things you would need a bow press for. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, but it definitely um, makes it a lot more appealing to go and get uh, something like one of these yeah. new, newer, newer bows. So, um, For sure. L- let's let's just talk about maybe the the prime. We'll go back to the prime. So the G five prime. They've got the black series. They've got the thirty one inch, the thirty three inch, and the thirty five inch axle to axle. So the thirty one inch is the black right. one. It's got a seven yes. inch brace. It's got three hundred thirty two feet per second as a total f- yeah. uh, total shot. It's a four point two pound bow, um, which is about two kilo bow, which is ridiculously light. And the draw lengths can be shifted from 25 and a half all the way to 31 and a half, changing in half inch increments and can be shot at 40 pounds, 50 pounds, 60 pounds, 65, 70 pounds and 80 pounds all the way up. That's for your 33 and your, uh, sorry, your 31 and your 33. The difference is in your 35. It doesn't have the the 80 pounds, I believe. Oh no, that was in your PSE. Right. Sorry. So uh, the 33, the black three is what they call it. It's got a six and a half inch brace it's got your 337 feet per second shot and it's 4.3 pounds so a little bit heavier by one point of a pound <laughs> um and then your, third, You're right. your black five is your six inch brace 343 feet per second and 4.3 pounds in body uh, in the in the weight of the bow so i mean they're actually very comparable bows when you sh- when you kind of look across the difference it's just the difference is your, sure. your axle to axle so if you were to go for a prime for instance well actually i'd love for you to talk about their new rotating the new cams because it's quite a interesting the the rotating mods but also they've got like the dual parallel cam system so both cams are moving at once um yes with two so, str- like the string comes basically yeah the two strings off of yep. the top that that's been prime's signature for a couple for a of while years now, yes uh with the dual cams there and what it's designed to do is eliminate cam link mm-hmm. uh if you've got these two cams connected together they're you know you can't have them lean <laughs> otherwise they they just can't physically yes. can't um, <laughs> so that's what um uh Prime has done with that in having their dual cam system. And it is, it, I mean, you, it just is, um, they're always nice bows to shoot. Um, they're fast, they're stable. They do, I'm forgetting their terminology, but they have a system with their bows where the, the throat of the grip, the very top of the grip is in the physical center of the bow. So they look very mm-hmm. different than other bows in that other bows there tends to be more above the handle than below. Yeah. Whereas with the primes, it's the physical center of the bow. So they balance really nice. Mm. Um, And then they have two different size cams because the string pays out differently. Uh, You know, I forget if it's the top or the bottom has to give out more in order to maintain level knock travel. Yes. Okay. Um, And so they have all these features that just make them really nice bows to shoot. I mean, they're thinking about the shooter. Mm. which is what I like. Yeah, definitely. I feel like uh, definitely no matter what brand people stick to, they, they tend to love their brand. Um, but I feel sure. like prime prime shooters are definitely people who talk out a lot. Like they, they love their bows. Like they really yeah. love their bows. Um, I've never shot a... Oh, actually, I did shoot a prime. It was the very first compound bow that I ever shot. I didn't know it was a prime at the time until later, later down track when I found out. And um, it was smooth. I, I was the stupid person who had my elbow in the way so it, it, cocked, it cocked me really good <laughs> um, yeah. had a bruise to show for weeks so yeah it, it, i have shot a prime once and it, it was fun it was nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they prime has really come on um to be you know hey this is a quality bow i think when it came out initially you saw the two cans and you kind of thought of it as a gimmick bow mm. but definitely not anymore I mean, that is a good shooting bow and there's people shooting it at the top level. Um, so yeah, 
Prime has come a long way and they put out a good product. Tunability wise, it definitely would probably like, w- am I right in saying it still would require to have, uh, like it, it'd probably be best if you had a bow press or a friend who had a bow press for, for it to be maximally tunable. So with the prime, you're going to do a lot of tuning with your cable arm. Okay. Um, their cable arm moves left and right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to be kind of how you address your paper tuning. Yes. Okay, cool. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so, you, and you don't need a bow press for that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. So moving on from the primes and you've got your PSE Evo NXTs. Once again, they've got yep. three different versions, the 31 inch, the 33 inch and the 35 inch axle to axle. Um, the 31, they're, they're all very comparable. Once again, 20 in the 31 inch and uh, no, sorry, the th- 31 inch, you've got 25 to 30 and a half inch draw lengths. Once again, adjustable and half inch draw lengths. Um, you've got a 50, 60, 65, 70 and 80 pound um, draw weight for your 31 and your 33%. Um, compared to your 35 inch axle to axle, it only goes from 50 to 70 pounds. Um, it's draw lengths yeah. at 25.5 all the way through to 31.5. When we're talking about the let offs, this bow has probably got the most adjustability for let off, I think. And it's got, yes. it's got the three options of 80 to 85 and 90%. So let's talk about what, yes. what let off is and why that's important and why the 90% is so different to anyone else. Sure. So uh, especially for bow hunters, mm. that 90% let off is awesome. You know, we've all, a lot of us have been there where let's say a deer, bear, whatever you're hunting comes in, you draw back and now he does something that you didn't expect. Mm-hmm. So you got two options. If your shot's not going to be immediate, do you let down or do you keep holding back? 90% let off. You can stand there all day. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're holding a very minimal amount of the draw weight. Mm-hmm. Um, and so with that, one of the things that I like about the, these, uh, the Evo NXTs is when you come to full draw and you have it at 90%, it's, it's like you actually have to think about pushing forward in order to let it down. Yeah. It just stays at full draw, you know, like nothing. <laughs> so you could hold that. I don't, I don't know. I've never tried to hold it as long as I could, but I know it's a long time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so with that, like why would someone choose an 80% over the 90% then just based on preference? Okay. So, so, so especially when you get into target archery, but that can translate over to bow hunting as well. Mm-hmm. Some people like to have a higher holding weight mm-hmm. at full draw. Um, if you have a, um, a heavy bow, let's say you like a lot of stabilization on it. Yeah. You have a heavy bow and high let off. That bow is going to want to move a lot at full draw mm-hmm. because you're not holding a lot of weight, but your bow is very heavy. So it's going to be able to influence you at full draw. Yeah. So if you like a lot of weight on the bow, you might want to ease, you know, lower your draw or uh, your let off just to have more holding weight so you can be stronger in your, in your aiming, mm-hmm. um, which is why we see, you know, a lot of those open compound archers with the big 33 inch stabilizers, yes. a lot of them drop down to like 60 and 65% let off because mm-hmm. wow. they like higher holding weight. Uh, I think I just saw Tim Gillingham, one of our big pros over here that he likes having 22 pounds as his holding weight. Um, which, you know, that's, yeah, I mean, that's a lot because he's, he's probably only, I'm going to say he's somewhere between 60 and 70 pounds max draw weight on his bows. Mm -hmm. Um, so holding 22, you know, that's, he's got a lower let off there. Yeah. A fair bit of pressure than holding the whole time. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, it just, if, if you have a higher holding weight, if you're using, uh, a back tension, a hinge release, mm-hmm. or a thumb button, it can make it easier to activate your shot because yeah. if you're not holding a lot of weight, it's kind of, you have to work harder to pull, to pull through, through it where yeah. at the at the lower weight, the bow's working for you. Yeah, that's, that's quite interesting. I never really thought of that concept before. I like that. Um, 
And and so with the PSEs, the in particular the Evo NXT, is there what what other new modifications have they got? Like obviously they've kept with their Evo cams, which have been quite popular. They did. For them. Um, they did. Yep. Wh- why uh, have they, they been so popular? It's it's just a dream to draw. Okay. It draw the draw cycle is nice in that it puts. Um, I, I like a draw cycle where it it requires you to put the most effort at the front end because mm-hmm. that's kind of where you're strongest rather than when you get halfway back, if it suddenly gets harder to draw that, I find that to be not quite as smooth. Yes. So if you imagine you're pulling the hardest at the front and yep. then it only gets easier from there, it's just, it's just smooth. smoother yeah. to draw. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And that's the, the Evo cam uh, has been doing that for a couple of years. Now, yes. So it's nice. And so what other adjust or what other things have they changed with the, the NXT? What's the, the newer things that they've brought to the party? Yeah, so they changed up the riser uh, a little bit this year mm-hmm. um, to take some weight out, if I remember. I think they took the bridge. I think they had a bridge at the bottom underneath it that they took out um, uh, just to make it uh, a little bit lighter, Um it balances nice, mm-hmm. uh, really nice. Um, those were kind of the, the, the big major things. things. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to jump to uh, the Elite Series next, and then we'll go over the, the three probably bigger name companies. So the Elite Cure, um, I was actually really, yeah. really impressed with this bow. Like with Super. With, the video that you guys did was absolutely insane, like uh. just to watch what you, you were doing with it. So it's... Um, the Elite Cure is 31 and 3 quarter axle to axle. Uh, it's got a 6 and a 5 eighth brace height and shoots 335 feet per second. But there is just so much adjust- adjustability to this bow. Like, it-, it is insane to watch the video and see how much they've really changed around. So, um, obviously, you can, yes. you can adjust the draw length, length, you can adjust the let off, you can adjust the limb stop. Um, and also we talked about your, your paper tuning all without having to change anything. Like you can just do that with an Allen key. Right. Um, and that obviously is the big, um, that's their big advancement is that, uh, uh, the, what do they call it? The set technology. Yeah. Set technology. Simplified exact tuning. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, and so like we mentioned, um, there on the side there, you're pivoting the pocket as you're paper tuning. And now again, what I like elite thinking about the archer mm-hmm. is, um, if you're looking on the bow, the, the adjustment that you make to, um, to, to pivot the pocket the way you need to, <laughs> they have a, a directional key there that tells you hmm. if you got a left tear, turn this way. Yeah. You got a right tear, turn this way. And I mean, working in a bow shop, you wouldn't believe how awesome it is to have that. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Cause you, you always, you know, people forget. It's like, yeah. Oh shoot. Uh, left tear. Left Which right. way do I do? Right. What do I got to yeah. do? Yeah. <laughs> so they make it simple there. Yeah. Um, and then, so they also, uh, what they did elite did, this year is they have their ASIM tri-track. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was a development for them because it got them away from their typical um, cam, I'll say orientation, yep. where everything was on one side of the cam. Um, uh, so now okay, it's, so. it's where all your cables. Yep. Um, and so now since you've got cables on both sides of the cam, it's, it's just a, a more stable uh, cam, I want to say. Mm-hmm. You're going to have less play in it. Um, uh, it was just, a, that was another great advancement to have along with the set technology. Um, so it, that was they've great also, to see. I believe they've upgraded their limbs compared to what they used to use. They did, yep. Yeah, got uh, new, stronger limbs in there. Um, and the different uh, stabilizing, like the stabby, uh, what are they called? The sta- uh, stabby lock. Was it stabby lock pockets? 
um, in the yep. yeah in the limbs, like the base of the limbs. Yeah, so you can lock everything. You can lock the limbs to the pocket, uh, and then you can lock you can lock the pocket to the riser so that it doesn't move. Mm -hmm. Um, But the one pro we were working with, Nathan Brooks, said he told me he took the locks out just to see if it would move, and it didn't move anyway. So he felt felt pretty good about that. (laughs) Yeah. And I believe they've made their grips slightly different, a bit more narrow, I think, from memory. So, yeah, it still feels like an elite grip. It's, mm-hmm. it's very, I mean, it was just a minor modification. I'm sure some of the pros came back and said, oh, just give it a little tweak here yeah. and you'll have this perfect uh, grip. Um, but it was cool to hear them talk about the evolution of this because, you know, elite was always known as a limb stop. Uh, cam Mm -hmm. you come to full draw and your stop hits the limb so that means your back wall is perfectly solid you can't draw any farther correct yes so one of the ways they were able to do that was because all their cables were on one side Mm. and so they could just have the limb stop on the other side the cam opposite yeah well now they have the asim tri-track now they have cables on both sides so they were like the engineer said he came to a point where he was like ah i I can't figure it out. I, I don't know how to do it. And he, one of the pros who works there told him, no, you have to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and so they did. They came up with a way that the uh, draw stop, or I'll call it the landing pad, where mm-hmm. the draw stop hits is this perpendicular uh, piece of carbon that comes down. So now the draw stop comes around. It hits the stop. There's no interference with any cables. Um, just they were able to maintain that elite back wall and work it around all these new technological advancements. So am, I, am I right in saying that they've made it so you can have both either a limb stop or a it, cable stop? You can, yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah, you can do that. Um, some archers like to hit the cable and have a little bit of give. It helps them in their shot activation. Uh-huh. Um, you know, personal preference yes yeah uh, that's cool i'm actually just looking at a picture of it now and i can see exactly what you're talking about with the the limb stop how they made that work that's really cool yeah yeah just comes off the top yeah well i think of, of all the bow videos i watched that was probably the one i was most um most impressed with was the elite cure and i don't know if that's just because you had the guys there with you who were who were um they know absolutely everything about the bone they were trying to sell it everything. essentially like they were, they were actually <laughs> showing like hey these are all the coolest parts um <laughs> But yeah, that yes. definitely it definitely excited me quite a lot looking at those bows. So moving on to probably the, the three bigger brands, your Bowtech Matthews and your Hoyt. Um, I, I feel yeah. like in particular over here in Australia, Hoyt probably own the the marketing side of things. Like they're the ones that are most known. And um, it's almost yeah. like people go in looking for a Hoyt, but then when they get to the, the shops, they realize that there's these other options and then they get maybe sold through practicing or through using the different bows. Um when it comes to the Hoyt Alpha series, they've got, like we talked about, your two different bows. Um, your your RX4 has a 29.5 inch axle to axle, 6 and 1 eighth brace height, 342 feet per second, and it's a 3.9 pound bow weight. Like that's how heavy the actual bow is. Now it's got yeah. the, the multiple cam system. I was wondering if you could explain this. So on cam two, you can have a 25 to 28 draw length. On yes. your Cam 3, you can have a 28 to 30 inch draw length. Um, it comes right. in 40, 50, 60, 65, 70, and 80 pound bow. So let's talk about that, that multi cam system and how that works yep. for your different lengths. So, uh, and that's something Hoyt has done for years, um, uh, has had multiple different sizes of cams to accommodate the different draw lengths. Mm-hmm. Um, you're in terms of efficiency, your cam is going to be most efficient at the top end of okay. whatever you're doing. Yeah. So if you, um, not to say that the other bows with their huge adjustments, um, well, I guess we'll say it, they're just not quite as efficient yeah. as one where Hoyt wanted to keep the, they wanted to have the draw length range but they wanted to maintain their efficiencies. So they broke it out into 
and I forget, some of them have uh, four cams, some of them have three cam sizes, um, and it's a draw length range. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are, um, you know, if you're an archer and you are at the cam size where your draw length is either at the bottom of one or the top of the other, you know, your best bet is to be at the top yes. of okay. the one cam. But some people, you know, depending on what they want to do, some people play with draw length. Maybe you like a longer one for certain things, so you would go up in cam size. But your, your speed's going to be better if your draw length is at the top of the camera. That, that's across all bows, right? Like your speed is going to be faster with the, the bigger draw yeah. length. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, both of these bows are actually quite comparable, right? Like they've both got the 85% let off and they're, they're similar, like they're actually the same axle to axle um, with the Axis Alpha as well as your, your RX-4. So you've got your 29 and a half inch on that for axle to axle. Once again, yep. six, six and one quarter, sorry, six and one eighth brace height, 342 feet per second, which is the exact same. It just weighs a little bit heavier It's made as it's made from aluminium. So 4.3 pounds in your weight. Um, your draw lengths are exactly the same. And then your your poundages are exactly the same. So of the two bows, like what, what are the major differences between the two when you're actually shooting them? What what did you notice different? So carbon feels different. Okay. Um, yep. to shoot. It is it is much lighter. Mm -hmm. And um when you shoot it, um the I, I don't want to say vibrations, but you know, at the shot when the string hits the stop. It just feels a little bit different. I, there's more feedback from okay. a carbon bow. That's not a bad thing. Um, you know, some people will say hand shock. I, I don't, the bow's not jumping out of your hand, but no. you can feel it more. Yeah. Um, and then you can with the aluminum. Yeah. Okay. Um, and some people, you know, the carbon, I took a carbon bow uh, when I, I went to the, uh, uh, Northwest Territory several years ago to hunt muskox mm -hmm. and it was minus minus 40 degrees. I went with a carbon bow because it's less weather sensitive in those extremes yeah. than an aluminum would be. I could touch it with my bare hands versus the aluminum at those temperatures. You know, if there's any kind of moisture, that would be Just bad. Freezing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, minus carbon, 40, you wow. know. <laughs> I, it's going to be better in the, in the extremes, the real cold, the real hot, because yeah. it's just not going to react. Um, and it's going to be lighter. You know, some of those guys who go way back in the mountains, exactly. you don't want to be carrying um, extra weight. Yeah. Hoyt has a real, one of their head guys is a real diehard bow hunter named Evan Williams, mm -hmm. who does all kind of extreme hunting. And, you know, he may walk six miles to get to where he's hunting, you know, up a mountain, <laughs> So he's concerned about every bit of weight that he's carrying. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, but it's a it's a um, those carbon bows that you know they're just great performers. Um, they're just really nice to shoot. It's just what do you want to do? Mm. I mean, the uh, frames with your bow. The frames of them even look pretty similar. And there's a that new. Yeah. It's almost like the the round um, back of the of your actual. Um, of the body of the bow that they've added to it on both the bows? Uh, they've had that for a while, that uh -huh. hand guard yeah, on the okay. back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hoyt's had that as part of their design uh, for a while. Actually, they, yeah, that's on just the something they've always it? had there. Yeah. Yeah, th um, that's kind of a signature feature Hoyt has always had. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just for, you know, a little bit of rigidity in that part of the riser. That's where they get it from. Okay. Uh, by putting that back there, yeah. Um, so okay. yeah, and the, the the RX4. I mean, that's what's incredible is that's one piece of carbon. Mm. That's one. I mean, it's one carbon tube. Yeah. That the, that's not a bunch of them welded together. That's one piece of carbon. So that's pretty incredible. That <laughs> is pretty impressive, isn't it? When you look at the the actual design and how yeah. much how much is going on. That's yeah. That's very impressive. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, moving on to, I'll leave the Matthews to last because it was your favorite. So we'll go on to your Bowtech, your Revolt series. And I think Bowtech are doing some incredible things. And I think they have been for a while. Um, and I feel like they're kind of, yeah. they're kind of clawing their way up to try to get that number one spot. I really feel, um, they've got the Revolt X, which is the, um, 33 inch axle to axle. 
Sorry, you've got... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's correct, isn't it? Yes. Revolt X is the yeah. 33. Yeah, and it's the six yes. and a half inch brace height, uh, 340 feet per second, 26 to 31 inch draw lengths, and you've got 50, 60, and 70 pound draw weights, whereas you've got your Revolt, uh, which is the 30 inch axle to axle, with a seven and quarter brace height, 330 feet per second, and 26 to 31 inch draw length, 50, 60, and 70. Right. With your draw weight, so I mean, once again, they're pretty pretty similar bows, right? Yeah, just a, a axle to axle uh, preference. Yeah, um, some people like a longer bow. That's me. I tend to like one in the thirty three to thirty five inch range. That's just what I like. How tall are you? Um, I'm six two. Yeah, so. so I think that's pretty common for taller individuals, right? That to, yeah. to like the the higher, I mean, the longer bows. The super short bows, 28. The string angle can get severe for me. Mm. However, some of the bows, like the new Matthews this year, the way they have their cams pitched, uh, they're really it's tall cams. Strength. Yeah. That that 28 inch bow actually shoots more like a 31 inch. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Because uh, the cams are are so high and low uh, around the riser. Yeah. So. But years ago, when there were 28-inch bows, I did not shoot them well. I, no. Could, they just weren't very stable for me. But, but yeah. these Bowtex, um, with that deadlock the cam system, uh, system yeah. there on the cam, I mean, that's that's just incredible. It's awesome. So can you explain um, that a little bit more, the, the deadlock cam system, how it works? Yes, sure. So um, it's basically an Allen key. Uh, or excuse me, an uh, Allen bolt mm -hmm. that you turn with an Allen key. And as you do it, I want to say the axle, um, I want to explain it, it's kind of spiraled, yep. if you can envision that, so that as you're turning it, the cam that's sitting on it moves left or right mm -hmm. with the spirals. I mean, that's just awesome yeah, that, that you can insane. do that because you go back, even five, six years, there were bows <laughs> where if you had to move the cam, man, if you took the axle out, there were all these little washers in there that would just fly out and you had to remember how many were on each side. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was really a nightmare. <laughs> it sounds like um, it. <laughs> and with this, you just turn the key and the cam moves yeah. left or right. That's insane. That's, that's as simple as it gets. Um, <laughs> So that really makes, and what's nice is, you know, yoke tuning, you're playing with the limb angle. What you're doing is inducing cam length with mm -hmm. yoke tuning. I mean, that's, that may be what you have to do, but you are inducing cam length. With this, there is no cam length. That cam is straight up and down. You're just moving the whole thing left to right. Um, so that's a great feature as well. Um, and it's just the last couple of years, Bowtech has put out some really great bows. Mm -hmm. I um, sat in with um, Outdoor Life magazine, uh, I want to say maybe two or three years ago, when they were pick, going through their bows to pick, you know, their editor's pick. Yeah. And I forget which Bowtech it was, but that was the winner that year. Mm -hmm. And then I believe they won again the next year, uh, Bowtech, both years, because they're just... They're great bows. They perform well. Uh, they're efficient. They're nice to shoot um, and just have a ton of features built into them that are great for archers. Yeah. And do you know much about the performance grip, and grip that they've put in, the, the clutch performance grip? Not a ton. Um, as I recall, it's it was meant to be modular, but mm -hmm. at last I remember... They, they hadn't had the different um, versions of it yet. Okay. Uh, they, they may have that now, but basically what it was is you were able to change the grip to get different um, angles, different angles and... for your hand. Yeah, yeah, whether you like a low wrist or a high wrist. And that's something I actually forgot to mention on your, your Hoyts. Obviously, that's something they've been doing for a while with the RX series, but you've got the adjustable grip. Oh, yeah. Those... Uh, I, I guess it was all the Alpha series, mm -hmm. the Axius. Um, you 
or was that the Invicta? Now I'm, now I'm mixing them. Mm-hmm. There was one where you got a bunch of grips. I think that might have been the Invicta, the Target, though. But um, they're available that you can change the angle to get it exactly where you want. And, and like, uh, as a shooter, have you found that that makes much of a difference to the shooters? It's obviously just personal it does. preference. But is there a lot? Oh, yeah. From, from archer to archer, some it depends on how you like to shoot. Mm-hmm. Some archers like to have their wrist really low. Yep. Some archers like to have their wrist really high. What you don't want to do is to, to be doing that off the grip. In other words, mm-hmm. trying to guess that position. Mm-hmm. If you can have your hand flat against something, whether yeah. it's wrist high or wrist low, it's just going to be more consistent for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, kind of so makes sense. That's and I mean, there's a bunch of aftermarket grips for all these bows that do the same thing, allow you to customize it exactly the way you want it. Yeah, and just on the Bowtech uh, archery site now, and they're talking about the deadlock cable um, containment. What's is that a different oh, system, or is that the same system that they yeah, had? It's a little bit different. It's the cable arm has. Um, I'll call it like a, a protective arm okay. that comes out and covers the cables where it goes, where they go through the roller. Yep. So that, you know, if you're in the back country and, you know, you hit a branch or something, your cable can't come out off the roller. Mm, okay. Be- because of the deadlock, because of that arm there, it's going to keep it Same contained place. Yep. no matter what happens. Okay. I like so, that. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. All right, so moving on to the big boy, the the Matthews, the VXR. <laughs> so once again, yeah. you've got your two different versions, your 30, 31 and a half inch, um, and you've yeah. got the 28 inch for axle to axle. Um, yeah. The 28 has a six and a half inch brace, 340 feet per second, and is a 4.4 pound bow. It's um, 80 or 85% on your let offs, and it comes in the 60, 65, 70, and 75 pounds. Um, and then you've got your 20, 25 and a half to 30 inch draw length. Whereas your 31 and a half inch as a six, sorry, 31 and a half inch axle to axle has a six inch brace, 343 feet per second. Um, it's 4.6 pound bow. It's 80 or 85% let off once again. And 60, 65, 70 or 75 pound draw weight. And it is 26 and a half to 31 inch draw weight so the very similar bows just a little bit faster on your 28 inch um yeah which is kind of a little bit surprising to me i thought that the bigger bow would be able to generate a, a bit more speed uh no it's usually the shorter ones okay that have the speed like even when you get into the target bows um a lot of archers will have a 40 inch bow for indoor and then like a 38 or 36 for 3d or something because it's going to be a little bit faster Mm -hmm. okay cool um but so this line this year the vxr matthews maintained what they call their switch weight mods Mm -hmm. which is which means you know on most compound bows if your bow is a you know it's 10 pound increment yeah i have a 70 pound bows that means i can adjust it with the bolt um on the limb pocket from 60 to 70 pounds and that's all you get, 60 to 70. So what Matthews has, if you wanted to switch and make it a 50 to 60 pound bow, you'd have to get new limbs, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, which weren't cheap. And, you know, that requires tearing the bow completely apart. So Matthews has the switch weight mods where they, the, the module that you install to get your draw length also can change the draw weight. Wow. So just by switching mods, I can take my bow from a 50 to 60 pound bow to a 60 to 70 pound bow. That's pretty cool, isn't Um, it? And yeah, they started it last year with the Vertex. They brought it over for the VXR series this year. Um, So that's a handy feature. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, why would I want to switch? Well, you know, some, a lot of people have one bow that they want to use for everything. Mm. And so let's say you uh, enjoy field archery. Field archery might require you to shoot 120 arrows. Yes. I might not want to be pulling 70 pounds 120 times. Fair enough. So maybe I want to drop, I might want to drop down to a 50 to 60 because again, if I'm shooting 60 pounds, it's going to be more efficient if I'm at the top end than if I just 
take the limb bolts out of my 70 pound bow to go down to 60, that's not going to be as efficient as if my limb bolt is all the way in and I can change it from to a 50 to 60 pound bow. Mm-hmm. So if someone is doing that kind of thing, hey, this is, re- this is a simple way to have one bow and you can do whatever you want. With it. Um, yeah, no, I like that. So, and uh, so the VXR 31 and a half is the one that I like. Mm-hmm. Um, last year, Matthews actually came, you know, the verdicts was the one that got all the publicity. Yes. They did have another bow that was the traverse. Yes. That was kind of a sleeper that they didn't talk about much, but people who shot it, that's the one they liked, including <laughs> me. Yeah. And we saw that bow being shot by pros, a lot of pros out on the 3D line, okay. which is a bit unusual. You don't usually see a hunting bow out mm-hmm. there on the 3D line, but it shot that well. And that was what I noticed. I, just shooting, I was like, man, this thing, it goes wherever I want it to. That's incredible. <laughs> this is a great shooting bow. So with... The, so that's a, that was a 33 inch bow, the Traverse. Mm-hmm. The, the VXR 31 and a half is an inch and a half shorter, but the riser is actually bigger. Yeah, I really like the look of it. It looks really quite cool. Yep. Yeah. The riser on the VXR is bigger than the Traverse. It's just the limbs are more parallel. Mm-hmm. So that bow holds every bit as nice as my Traverse because it has that big long riser. That's really cool. I'm just looking at some of the adjustability of it as well. It's just, yeah, it's it's quite cool that they're different. Uh, what's that little called, like the the um, cable system that they use for that? Um, what is this? so their cable arm is ri- is rigid. Uh, it's a roller system, but it doesn't move. Mm. Um, it and you you wouldn't there again. Um, they are trying to stick with their cams being perfectly straight. Mm. So the way you adjust them is by chase, changing what they call the top hats, which are those spacers I was talking about. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Uh, in the cams. And like I said, they're not the little washers like they used to have. There's actually these tubes that you take out that the axle goes into. So it's it's a real simple system. I mean, you put it in, a, you do need a press, you put it in a press, pop the cam off, take the axles out, and then you just change these um, top hats in there to move the cam left or right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, I, I mean, I do that with with my uh, Matthews bows, and, uh, man, you can just really get these things dialed in, which, if I can put in a plug here, one of the things that we hear all the time is, guys especially bow hunters shooting fixed blade broadheads mm-hmm. is they'll say my bow doesn't shoot fixed blades i have to shoot expand <laughs> if you're i mean and we hear that all the time or they say oh it's hunting season i have to recite in for my fixed blades because they don't fly like my field point if that's happening that's a tuning issue yes exactly it's not that your bow just doesn't want to shoot broad fixed blades <laughs> It's That's a, quite funny. It's a tuning. <laughs> I, I, it's a tuning issue, and so all of these bows. That's where I'm really impressed. Where if the easier you make it to do this tuning, now you can imagine years ago where if you had to use spacers, that was a pain. Mm. So all of these systems, whether it's yoke tuning or top hats or moving the cam or the pocket, any of these things are easier than that. Yeah. Okay. And so you can really dial these things in so that you can shoot any fixed blade broadhead should fly exactly like your field points. Yes. If your bow is tuned properly, that's what should happen. <laughs> um, that's funny. <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. And the Matthews bows just uh, to me they just feel nice to shoot. Um, what are they made As of? You mentioned, what's the what's the material? Aluminum. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. They they haven't gotten into carbon series, uh, but now the other thing with the VXR uh, that Matthew started last year is their grip. Yes. Um, 
I forget the name of the... Enhanced stabilizer bushing. Yep, so a bigger piece of stainless steel so that your stabilizer is just more solid in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's not going to move around. Uh, But the grip, what's the name? I'm sorry, it's in the engage grip. The engage grip, engage grip. Okay, so it comes with that one on the bow. It's a rubber grip, so it feels nice for bow hunters, but you can take that off which is what I end up doing. Huh. And they have these side plates that you put on. And the rubber grip just has a little bit of a high spot right in the center, mm-hmm. which for me personally, I like it perfectly flat. Yeah. So if I take that grip off and I use the side plates, now my hand is right on the riser and it's perfectly flat. So just that they give you that ability option. Yeah. To, to change it the way you want is, you know, is awesome. Yeah. I don't force you, you know, like in the old days, the grip was the grip. I mean, you, whatever they put on there, that's what you had to deal with. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting that a lot of the companies are starting to add that in. I never thought that would be a, a big selling point, but they're all starting to transition towards that. It seems. Well, what happened and uh, they were kind of forced into it is several years ago. What would happen is, these target archers, they would get the bow. The first thing they would do is take the grip off and just wrap the riser. And they would just shoot off a bare riser without the grip. Yeah. Because they didn't like it. So finally, the bow company said, well, if they're just going to shoot off the riser, I might as well make it so they can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, yeah. the, the silent connect system that they've got, is that is that brand new oh, just yeah. to the, VR, the VXR? That is. Yep. That's a new uh, feature they have in there. Um, it's an add-on piece so that you have, it, it gives you a little um, post that you can attach uh, uh, your carrier tree stand cord to. Yep. So you can haul it up into your tree stand. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have, a, they have their own uh, rope that they make for that system that has no metal on it. Hence the silent uh, connect yes. system. Okay. So you can hook it up and it doesn't make any noise. Yeah. So that was a new feature they added this year. And they also have a sling that goes with it that uses the silent connect system. Yeah. So you, you can walk around s- with it. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. So you don't have to balance it on your neck anymore when you're walking the hills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, that's great. Well, I think that's, um, I think that's really cool. I really like the insight that I think we've given for individuals. I feel like if they want to know more, probably the best place to go to is definitely your YouTube channel. Um, is there anything that we didn't touch on on any of the bows, PJ, that you think we should have? Well, so I would say like, like you asked me, which is my favorite. Yeah. And I said the Matthews VXR. But what we see, the, the best thing, if you're able to do it, is honestly, don't take what I say, mm-hmm. don't take what anybody says on the internet, is if you can go out there and shoot these different bows side by side, yeah. one of them is going to feel right to you. Yes. And then that's the one that's right for you. You know, people always, oh, which one should I buy? Well, I can give you my opinion for what I like, but... The shots, everything about the shot cycle, the draw cycle, mm-hmm. uh, after the um, hand shock, everything might feel totally different to you. Um, so I, I always like to see people, hey, don't take my word for it. Go shoot these bows mm-hmm. and you pick what feels right to you. I really like that. It's probably one of the best pieces of advice I ever got given was um, – that a, a, a bow is kind of going to be like a lightsaber for a Jedi. Like it's going to pick you almost <laughs> yeah. when you go and shoot it. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, and so we at the shop, we're fortunate that we carry all the major brands. Mm-hmm. And so we like to see people, somebody comes in, we're like, Hey, you can shoot every single one of these bows. Yeah. And you pick whatever feels good to you, you know, and it'll be interesting to see people is they'll come in and say, I want the I want the new Matthews. Okay, you know what is it you're looking for in a bow? And you might say, well, just since you're here, try shooting this PSE mm-hmm. Evo NXT. See what happens. And a lot of times we will have people say, you know, whatever they came in expecting to buy, they'll end up leaving with something else once they try it. Yeah, because you hear all your buddies, you know, oh my buddies, they all shoot this bow. I want that bow too. Well, that's 
good to be like the others, but if that doesn't feel right to you, why? Why do it? I think that's where the marketing comes into play, right? Like the, the companies are obviously trying to sell their bows. And so when you come in with the idea, it's potentially because of what they've done with their marketing ploys. And it, it's great because obviously right. that's, that's business. But at the same time, it's, uh, it can sway your decision when you actually get the, the bow in hand as well. Yeah, if you walk out of there, you know, $1,000 for uh, just a bare bow, man, we sure hope that it's something that you like. Yeah. And, you know, we'll have a good time shooting. We don't want you shooting it and thinking, ah, man, this thing stinks. I can't hit anything. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> you know, that's, that's no fun. thousand bucks. We need to move to America. It's all like 2-2 two, two here. Obviously the, Is that the, right? Yeah. Obviously, the dollar is quite different. But you're looking for a, oh, okay. about one one seven to 2-2, two, two, roughly. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our, all ours, the the... Carbons get up uh, higher, 15, 16, 1700. But okay. We're right around 900 to $1,200. That's going to be your flagship yep. areas. No, that's great. That's awesome. I think um, I think if you were to look across, like I was just looking at my notes just then of the different bows, really there's there's not a whole heap of difference in speed. There's a, a little bit of difference in weights. Um, your draw, draw lengths are all obviously the same. They're adjustable. Your draw weights are all pretty much the same. Um, there's yeah. like really, there's not a whole heap of difference between them apart from some adjustability um, design. So it really does come down to personal preference. Yeah, it's going to be um, the guys, you know, like maybe 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, mm-hmm. They're going to be limited because there aren't as many that go to 31, 32 inches. Yeah. So they're they're going to have to, you know, slim down in what they have to choose from. Uh-huh. And then there are some guys who like 80 pounds yeah, to which shoot. Yeah, once again, limits That's it a bit. That's going to limit. Yeah, not everyone has an 80-pound version. Your so. PSE, your Prime, and your Hoyts, I think. Are the only ones? Yeah. Yeah. For 80. For 80 yeah, pounds, yeah. That's about right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, that's that's really um, so, cool. So and, and so we're talking about the flagship here, uh, the flagship bows. I should Correct. mention that the mid-range bows have gotten a lot better. Uh-huh. You know, the $500, $600 bows, uh, America price, there are several in there that are really good mm-hmm. uh, by, by all these companies. Most of them have a version of a bow that's more affordable and these are good bows. Yeah. They're not, you know, they cost less, but they're like, you know, some people think, Oh, that's a cheap bow. It's not, they have a lot of the same features and technologies, you know, it might be in the machining is a little different or they might use um, some hard plastic somewhere where they might have metal on, on the higher end bows. Mm-hmm. I, I would tell people if you're concerned about price, you know, check out these mid-range bows because they are good. Yeah, it's what I shoot is a mid-range bow. I've got a yeah. carbon icon, the the Bowtech and the deluxe oh, yeah. version. It's great. There like you it's, go. It's a nice mm-hmm. bow. It does. It, if anything, it's going to be able to hunt just the same as any other bow. So um, for sure, I, I'm kind of in the mindset right now of like I'm definitely not buying a bow until I've got until I'm producing a fair bit of meat for the family like <laughs> I, I can't just keep buying new equipment because i haven't got the animal yet <laughs> uh, uh yeah it's it's amazing how you can get into that whirlpool <laughs> yeah definitely i think the, the get, next latest <laughs> yeah exactly you get sucked in every year right it's uh it's quite interesting yes. to, to see the the latest and greatest and think how it's going to make you so it much is. better but really it comes down to time in the field and time practicing, I think, <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you were mentioning uh, you have the carbon icon. Uh, Quest, which is a G5 company, so mm-hmm. it's prime. They have a bow called the Quest Thrive, yeah. uh, which is a more affordable. That thing is awesome. That thing shoots great. Um, every bit as good as you know the uh, Black Series. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's an awesome bow. It just doesn't cost as much. Yeah. So, yeah. and I think if we're talking about bringing new people into the into archery, you can't make it look too expensive. Like it, it, it is an expensive yeah. sport at the end of the day. No matter how you get into it, like 
once you start shooting arrows and losing arrows or if you're getting broadheads, like depending on how much you're spending on broadheads, like it, it's a never-ending battle. You've got your, if you're going out hunting, you've got your camo gear to buy, you've got your binos to buy, you've got your, <laughs> like, it, it just keeps going. The list is, is never-ending. Um, and so it's like, how can we, how can you make or how can you bring people into it? And I think it's by showing, hey, you can get a bow and you can start shooting in your backyard and make it a little bit fun and then you progress from there. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, you know, over here, if I were to go to, if I were a regular at, you know, one of our professional football or professional baseball or football things, mm -hmm. I could end up easily spending as much in a year as definitely I would on archery. Definitely. I mean, so the, uh, yeah. the health and fitness world is a, a trillion dollar company. Like, oh, sorry, trillion dollar industry. Like, it's ridiculous. So, as I'm sure probably realistically archery probably fits into there somewhere. So <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Mental you health, can... physical health. It's great. <laughs> hey, and if you want to, you can even just go the basics, bare bow recurve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the most simplest form of archery and that's really inexpensive. <laughs> most primal way. It's uh, I, I've got a, I've got a recurve bow. It's actually what got me into it and, and I love it. I still love shooting it. I love, I show everyone archery through that firstly and then I'll introduce them sure. to the compound bow later if they're, if they're interested and usually it's like me yeah. standing behind them, helping them draw the bow back and then they, they get to yeah. have their shot. But it's cool. Whatever gets yeah. people interested, I, I think is, is awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, PJ, thank you so much. So once again, Lancaster Archery is at Lancaster, which is L-A-N-C-A-S-T-E-R Archery or uh, yeah, Archery, A-R-C-H-E-R-Y. That's on Instagram. Your YouTube channel is Lancaster Archery Supply and you personally are on Instagram as well, which is at p.j.riley, which is R-E-I-L-L-Y. Is there anywhere else for people to follow along? Obviously, the website as well is probably a good place to head. Yep. So, yep, um, we're on Lancaster Archery has a Facebook page as well. Um, uh, so you can go on there. We post a lot of our videos uh, to their pro new product videos. We're constantly pushing through there so people can see some of the latest and greatest. We're very fortunate. We tend to get products before a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. And so we try and introduce them to the archery world as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, so that's a great place to go and see uh, what's new, what what companies are coming out with. Yeah. Um, so no, that's awesome. I really, yeah, like I said, I really enjoy your videos. I think they're very insightful. They're they're really cool. I, I it's kind of my go to place for for new products. We have a lot of customers in Australia. Mm. Big big following in Australia. We always love um, interacting with those folks. Uh, so hopefully some of them are out there listening. But uh, yeah, we're we do a lot of business in Australia. Happy to do it. That's good. That's really cool. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. All right, Matty. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That wraps up this week's episode. Thank you so much for joining us, team. If you did have any topics, questions, or you wanted to suggest a guest for Becoming a Bowhunter, you can send me an email at matty at becomingabowhunter.com. If you are enjoying the show or you've enjoyed in particular episodes, please do me a solid and share it around with your friends. If you are not already, please hit the subscribe button as the more subscribers we get, the higher the podcast gets ranked and that definitely helps out for showing it to other individuals. If you are not already following me on Instagram, it's at becomingabowhunter.podcast and on YouTube, it's becomingabowhunter. Get out, team. Fling some arrows. Get that practice in and walk those yards in the paddocks until you find those critters. That is it for now, but not the last time that you'll hear from Becoming a Bowhunter. Hunter.